In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Once again, it's a great joy to see you this evening in our church to celebrate this divine liturgy. We just heard this gospel reading, which seems very harsh. Peter, who was kind of known as one of the chief spokesmen of the apostles, the very one who declared that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God, the one to whom Jesus said upon this confession, I will build my church. Today we hear Peter in a very different situation. The gospel starts out with this strange message. Tell no one that I am the Christ. Jesus was not yet ready for others to have declared to them that in fact he was the son of the living God because he knew that the prophecies must be fulfilled in the proper order. But when the right time came, he knew that when this confession of faith, of reality was made known, that the Jews would seek to kill him. And he tells his disciples, and he begins preparing them, and it says, from that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed. But he also told his disciples that on the third day he would be raised. And Peter, not really understanding what he was about to say, turns to Jesus and looks at him and literally rebukes Christ. And he says, God forbid, Lord, that this should happen. God forbid that you should go to Jerusalem. God forbid that you should be arrested and put on trial and crucified upon the cross. And Jesus looks at Peter and he says those very harsh words, get behind me, Satan. Obviously, he's not calling Peter Satan, but he knows where those words have come from that came out of Peter's mouth. They came out of this desire to deny the will of God. Christ reminds us that this is the very reason why he was born in a cabin and laid in a manger as a child that God himself became one of us precisely so that he could die on the cross. Because it's only through the death on the cross that God himself could descend into Hades and there destroy the very power of death and make a way for you and I into the kingdom of heaven. And so he tells Peter, get behind me, Satan, because it's for this very reason that I have come. He literally turns to Peter and says, you're a hindrance to me, for you are not on the side of God. Because it was God's will that his son would become one of us precisely so that he could die on the cross. The fathers often play with this verse in Genesis. But you remember that God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God said, let there be stars in the heaven, and it was so. And he said, let the waters bring forth life, and it was so. But when it came to create man, we hear a very different phrase. We hear, let us create man in our own image and our likeness. And the father said that there must have been a conversation that went something like this. Because we're perfect love, let us create man to be just like us. Let's give him the ability to literally become gods. And let us create him in our own image and likeness. And let us love him like more than anything else in all of the cosmos. And we will love him because we will create him to be just like us. And then the conversation probably turned, but you know what will happen. 
Satan, who was cast out of heaven, will interfere and convince man to turn away from us. And the Father said, and yet despite that knowledge, the Holy Trinity decided to create man knowing that one of them would have to become one of us so that we might become what God intended for us. And so it's for this very purpose, from the moment man was created, that God knew that at the right time he would become one of us and that it would lead to his death upon the cross so that he could descend into Hades and there destroy the very power of death, freeing man so that man could become what he was intended to be, sons and daughters of the living God. And so we were created in the image of God, and to become that, God became one of us. And so he turns to Peter and says, you're a hindrance to me, because for this very reason, I have come into the world. And for this very reason, it is God's will, the will of the Father, that I should die on the cross so that mankind might be saved. And the gospel ends with, then Jesus told his disciples, if any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And thus you and I are called to take up our cross, to take up all of those things that stand in the way of us following God and loving him and doing his will and to take on all of those things so that we can overcome them and still follow Christ. So my prayer of this day is that each of us, including myself, will have the strength, the wisdom, and the courage to follow Christ, to follow his will, to understand what we just heard in this gospel about God's great love for us, and that we will have the strength and the heart to turn to God in thanksgiving for what he has done for us. May our loving, caring, and merciful and life-giving God bless us and give us the strength to follow his will. God bless you, and just as a reminder, we should keep our masks on and they should cover our nose. Um, and let me just kind of take care of how we will take communion so there's no confusion today. We will all go out to the side aisle and walk to the back of the church and come across and then come down the center aisle. You will notice on the floor there are markings. They're meant to keep us two meters apart. So I'd ask that you social distance. It should be fairly easy with the numbers today. In a few weeks, we will be doubling our numbers. So it's probably good that we get very used to following social distancing so it becomes easier when there's a hundred of us in the church, okay? So may God bless you and we'll do the same at the very end. When we leave the church, you'll come forth. I will give you the uh, dador and the blessed bread, which has been cut for you with a mask and gloves and put in your own plastic bag. Uh, but you'll go out the side aisles once again and come down the center. So may God bless you and may he be with you. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us 